Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Ike Fellman, Pete Hoffman, WFN's Outside the Cage. Check us out at underscore Outside the Cage, at Ike underscore CBS. At the Hoff WFAN. Woo! Dude, I kind of blew my shot with the Mike's app. You know, we just talked about uh, Max, uh, Dustin, Israel, and Kelvin, yeah. UFC 236. Woo! I'm tired. Unbelievable. Unbelievable fights. Unbelievable night. Um, honestly, and, and the sad thing is about that night in general, like, there were some good fights, but once you saw the 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 main events, you can't even talk about the other fights. They weren't that good. Like I love Khalil Roundtree, but can't touch what happened on uh, those main events, co-main events. It was just unbelievable. Shout outs to uh, Long Island's own. Uh, what is that? Matt Frivola, uh, Sarah yes. Longo guy. Got it All done. I know is that that for the whole night, my nine out of thirteen. Uh, I didn't even dogs count. won because I went with majority favors, dude. <laughs> like I, I thought like you were messing with me like on the undercard the prelims, but like, you went exact opposite. I'm like, what I did didn't you, know that where did too you look at? Them. And I'm like, I'm like, you went with all the underdogs. How? Why are you going with all the dogs? I just thought it was cool. And, and you, and you basically won. I was like, this is wait, bullshit. really? Yeah, I, I thought dude, maybe I had one or two on you. You think it was? I had one. I didn't I even had, check. I, I was, I, I was praying that all my my main card fights won so that I could catch up to you. I think I got four right that night. I got. Not like it makes a difference. No, that's, that's, neither here nor anyway. there. Yeah. It's, but I, I definitely got uh, Adesanya right. I got. That's all I get. I didn't get round. I got. I went Anders. We both went. My Anders. boy Anders. I did get. Um, jeez, I forgot. I forget who it was. But it, either you way, guys my, love this, right? You love this. Who cares? That's right. But anyway. Yeah, dude. Dustin Poirier. You know, my biggest takeaway on Mike's. We were just gushing over Israel Adesanya's performance, mm-hmm. as we should. Fight of the year, probably. Yeah. You know, nobody's gonna be better than that. But Dustin Poirier. I mean, we didn't. Nobody leads with this guy. Nobody talks about this guy. He's literally a career underdog. And yeah. dude, they say it's scheduled for a September fall fight against Khabib. If Dustin Poirier beat Max Holloway. Uh, destroyed Eddie Alvarez and Justin Gaethje last year. If he Anthony beats Pettis. Uh, Anthony Pettis, if he beats Max Holloway and Khabib Nurmagomedov in the same year, show this man some freaking respect. It's, um, well, you know, it's crazy because they, they put that uh, – they were trying to pump up Holloway more, clearly. But Poirier's got a great story. And Holloway, you know, even in the feet, the guy's still amazing. But Poirier, you know, it's he's, he's that underdog where he really had to – to work his way up, and it's almost like the Amanda Nunes, where it's like she's fighting all these stars, and she's knocking them down one by one by one, and it's finally like, dude, it's not about who she's fighting. It's about Amanda Nunes. <laughs> yes. Dustin yes. Poirier point. is and at that point and now where it's like, dude, look at Dustin. It doesn't make a difference who he's beating. Yes, he's beating a lot of great guys, but he's that good. Yes. Like, pay attention. Listen, we've seen the knockouts. We saw the loss to Michael Johnson, him getting knocked out to Michael Johnson. We saw the loss to Conor McGregor in the featherweight division. We've seen all that. But how he's come back, he is strong for that lightweight division. He's got heavy hands, and he tagged Max Fucking Holloway. motivated, man. There's no yeah. doubt. Like, he, he seems like a humble guy. You know, now I'm starting to figure out, is the best fighters in the world the, uh, the smartest guys, or is it the best fathers? Because... Embedded and UFC Countdown, they did such a great job of Max, obviously, many blesses, his own celebrity. Yeah. But Dustin, his daughter, and his wife, it, it's a great story. And this guy is beaten down, probably took some Advil. You know, yeah. he's definitely not in the right state of mind. And the post fight press conference could have yelled out, This is my time. F all you for doubting me, my whole cr-. He was humble, didn't say much. I, at one point, blood was coming down his sunglasses while he was talking. <laughs> I was like, This guy is a freaking true warrior. Been through the ups and downs. Yeah. Came out on top. You know, Conor McGregor is laughing with money, but Dustin Poirier gets all the respect in the world. Funniest thing, though, he did take a dig at Max. He was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, and it didn't hit me until he stood up. Oh, you think like, that was a dig? Come on. No, you I don't wear Hawaiian just, fly. Think, no, but he was doing it all week, dude. He's uh, like, that's his oh. style. He's kind of colorful like that, dude. Hawaiian fly? Like, okay, what do you call those? Layla's? Louisiana, dude. They got that, like, you know... Hawaiian island. I don't know if they're Hawaiian, but they <laughs> got their Bourbon Street, man. I didn't take note. Like I, I think he's that that colorful type of dude anyway. Where I'll see him like rock that. So that to me. Didn't, okay, I thought didn't. it was a subtle jab. Okay. No, I'm reaching. I'm no, reaching. You are reaching, dude. No, they're not, dude. They were made respect, and not to mention he did he even apologize in the cage. He goes, "Sorry for cursing at you." <laughs> Poirier went to Holloway after once. He goes, "Yo, sorry for cursing at you." Before he goes, "Say fuck to you, whatever it was." And and and, and Matt Holloway's like, "Dude, it's all part, part of the fight game, man. It's all part of the business. It's all good." Love so Max the respect too. that they have, dude, it's just definitely, it's definitely 
a cool vibe. Both are, are warriors. All four of them are warriors. Yeah, for real. It was an unbelievable night. What that puts us at later on in in the in the in the year is going to be ridiculous. The Adesanya versus uh, Whitaker is going to be ridiculous. In Australia, dude, that's that's going to be nuts. It's going to be ridiculous. And then, I mean, who else are you going to put on the card? I mean, Bam Bam Tuivasa. We're probably going to see the return of Mark Hunt one more time. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, and then you're also going to have again, like you, like you were talking about earlier, the Habib Poirier fight. That's going to be ridiculous too. You know, so there's a lot of good things that are coming out of this. And it's not just them, too. Like, you got to remember, Max is going to go down to featherweight. He's going to defend his title against who? Maybe Volkanovski if he beats Aldo, uh, uh, the UFC 237. I say either or. Screw it, man. Good fights are Aldo good again? fights. That, uh, no. Good fights. Uh, if, no. If Aldo finishes Volkanovski, it might change it, too. You know, it, you have to see it. Maybe. Let's see. No, no, no. Because here's the thing is, after you've seen someone get beat down twice, you twice. don't need to see a third time. I understand, sure, if Aldo beats Volkanovski, then maybe Volkanovski are re- not ready, but there should be somebody else that, that, that's available. Maybe not Jeremy Stevens, maybe not Josh Emmett, maybe that Frank Edgar match that we were always hoping for. Does Edgar have anybody scheduled? Because, yeah, that is the one. That is the I, one. I don't remember. I, honestly, I don't remember if I see I've taken a lot Edgar. of time, right? Seems He's like taking it. some time off. I think he was recovering from an injury. I mean, he hasn't come back from – well, no, he fought back since that Ortega fight. Right, right. We saw he him fought. in AC. We yeah, little... yeah. So he's, def- <laughs> he's, definitely, uh, he's definitely come back. But that's the guy that I think that should have a shot if, you know, a Volkanovski's not ready. Nobody's really pulling for in that division, but I'm okay with Max Holloway taking the John Jones approach of picking off one by two by three, taking his time right. with that. Dude, the 155 division is a different animal. His punch and power Crazy. doesn't relate. His chin held up against Poirier, and I'm sure it hold up against anybody. Uh, uh, yeah, he has maybe his, that's his heart though, dude. That's uh, that's his heart. He's he can hold into he. He says he fights with. He told us he's like I fight with guys bigger than than Dustin all the time, and they go full force. So like, hey, they don't let up. So he can hang. He can't but, win, but, but he yeah, can hang. Yeah, he's the greatest, one of the greatest featherweight <laughs> champion of all time. He, sure. He's he's probably a top 10, 155 contender, dude. Go handle your shit. Keep keep winning belts. You know, maybe fifty five will be there down the road. But wow. Dustin, man, I, I can't wait to see his takedown defense against Khabib. Is Khabib gonna maul him? Like, right. and another thing, Max, nothing against you, but dude, you were taken down by Dustin Poirier multiple times. You don't think Khabib's gonna maul you, dude? Khabib's a different animal. I'm excited to see uh, Dustin. But Poirier. the funny he, thing is that I think that Max would do well against a guy like a Tony Ferguson. Yes. Oh, so, and like, that's where is, you were hinting at that too. Yeah. So like, there's certain fights that he would match up well with. So it's like 155. Maybe not his spot right now. He's only 27 years old, too. So maybe as he gets older in age, maybe the 155 will turn back for him. But right now, 145, featherweight is definitely his class for sure. Totally makes sense, but Khabib, another animal. I mean, I'm putting Poirier on the same uh, line as like a Chris Wyman versus Anderson Silva or Anthony Smith against John Jones. Dude, true underdog stories, the blue-collar mentality, never broke camp, never left anybody who's on their side. I can't wait to see what's next for the diamond. Here's the thing, though, right? So, Khabib, we saw he actually had some accuracy with the strikes when he landed a shot versus McGregor, which McGregor never thought that'd be happening, okay? He kind of shocked him a little bit, like stunned yeah. him a little bit. And then the other thing is, can Poye stop Khabib's takedown? I mean, that's the biggest thing, because... Khabib's not dumb. He's going to watch this tape. I'm assuming he's going to watch this tape. And maybe, maybe he doesn't. But there's Khabib still has that game plan of, I'm going to bring Get the, the hands on him. Yeah. I can't see Khabib standing toe-to-toe with Dustin for more than a round or two. Like, maybe with Al, he wasn't worried about his striking so much. You know, it was, and Al was a little bit more difficult because he is a wrestler. He wasn't able to take him down as well as he was, you know, Conor McGregor because the defense was that much better. But Dustin, I'm not saying that he doesn't have a takedown offense, but it's nothing that can prevent Khabib from doing what he wants to do. And show good cardio. Max, if he does anything well, it's accumulating strikes, and it's nonstop, a massive strike after strike. Poirier showed a good cardio tank if Khabib's going to take him down. Um, you know what? Work on jujitsu. Get back to the feet. Fight a tired Khabib. But, dude, Israel Adesanya is a freaking on another planet. 